All right, my name is Charlie Park. I'm an engineer at IFT, and I'm going to be talking to you about why you should stop trying to hire a female. Before I get into that, if you want a transcript of this talk, it's at charliepark.org slash ignite. Uh, quick, uh, who's the guy in the room? Hands? Hands, hands, hands. OK, put them down. Good, this is for you. Uh, so there's two hard problems in computer science. You've probably heard this joke. It's not that funny. It's OK. Uh, one is cache invalidation. Second problem is naming things. It's not really funny, uh, but people screw up naming things all the time. Words are hard. They have meaning. Uh, we mess it up. When you use the wrong word in the wrong context, it can cause big problems. Females is a word that is being used today in the wrong context, and it's causing problems. We're going to talk about that first. People say, uh, people want to hire more women, that's good. They say, we're looking for females, that's bad. There are three contexts where you can say we're looking for, or where females is the right word. One is you're a cop talking about a suspect or a victim in a crime. Two is you're a doctor talking about your patient. Three is you're this guy singing the theme song to Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and you're saying females is strong as hell. Now, why is it a problem? It's a problem for a couple reasons. One of them, female, is a, is a term describing sex-specific characteristics. You could say, a female guppy is larger than a male guppy. Totally fine. When you describe the women that you work with or that you might work with as females, what you're basically saying is the fact that they have a vagina is what's important. It's not. <laughs> Second, you're describing an adjective. You're taking an adjective and you're making it into a noun. You wouldn't say, we want to hire a black. We want to hire a gay. We want to hire a Japanese. You shouldn't say, we want to hire a, a female. Third is that you're taking one aspect of this person and you're, t and you're saying this is what describes them in total. This is a great book. It's called El Defo. It's about a little girl who loses her hearing. She doesn't want to be defined by her deafness. She doesn't want to be defined by the fact that she wears hearing aids. She wants to be defined by what she can do. Speaking of girls, also a word you should probably move out of your vocabulary. I'm not talking about groups that work with women and girls to help them learn how to code and program. They're fine. I'm talking to you guys. If you're looking for the right word, it's pretty simple. If the person is under the age of 13, you can say girl. <laughs> if she's under the age of 18, she's a teenager. Otherwise, she's a woman. When you say female to describe women and girls, you sound really creepy, like an alien looking for females all through the universe, like Quark in Star Trek. In fact, Zoe Quinn noted so many men describing women as females that she created a Chrome extension that takes Quark's face and puts it before and after every instance of the word females online. So you get stuff like this on Reddit. Life pro tip, guys, if you want attention from females, here's what you do. Here's a life pro tip, guys, don't use females to describe women. So I don't want to just rip on people. I want to give you guys some productive things that you can do to take back, make your work a better place. What should you do? The number one thing I want to recommend is that you not say, how do we get more women to work here? Instead, say, how do we make this place more accessible and more approachable for everybody? When you do that, you come up with better answers, better solutions. Flexible time benefits everyone. Flexible locations benefits everyone. You have a life outside of work. Maybe it's that you want to go and play soccer with your roommate. Maybe it's that you want to, your dad, you want to go home and have dinner with your kids. If your company allows you to work when you best work, it's better for everybody. Second, when you're looking for where your office is going to be located, think about the safety of the area. It's one thing if you're a 22-year-old dude walking through a uh, scary part of town. Totally different if you're not a 22-year-old dude. Third, these are some things that are now uh, specific for, for women. Uh, if you have a child and you go back to work, you want to have a place where you can pump milk. Have a place in, this is not to the women, this is to the office, have a place where women can do that safely, uh, it's, and it's pleasant. <laughs> tampon club is, uh, if, okay, so if you offer Kleenex in your office, you can offer tampons and sanitary pads. <laughs> tampon club is a secret society of women, and they do this. I'm sure they would love to not have a job, uh, so take care of that. Ultimately, it's about respect. <laughs> People want to feel valued. They want to know that they are not second-class citizens. The things you do and don't do and say and don't say matter more than you think. So two things. One, stop calling women females. Two, make your workplace more accessible and approachable for everyone. There are women that are in your workplaces right now that feel devalued. There are women that are not yet in your workplace that haven't hit those roadblocks yet, and they will if things don't change. I want to close talking about my daughters. They're incredible. They work on amazing projects. They idolize Vi Hart. This is my daughter, Lucy, flying a plane last year at Women in Aviation. You talk to my daughter, Frances. She's eight. You say, what do you want to be when you grow up? She doesn't say, I want to be an engineer. She says, I want to keep being an engineer. And guys, here's the thing. I want you to know what it means to work with women, not with females, not with girls, because one day they will be women, and maybe they will come to you 
and offer you a job. Thank you.